Y'all, my name is Eric Jordan. I'm Anthony Sellers, and this is Browns, Browns in Our Blood. Blood. First of all, I want to thank my man Derek Edwards. In our hood, we call him Debo, but it's not for the reason you would think it is. But that's that's his nickname. As you see, he's a hardcore Ravens fan. All good. And we just played the Ravens this past weekend. And whenever I can get, we can get some of our friends that's um, in the football like us, like talk football like us. We like to get them on and bring them on and, and hear their thoughts especially when we're in the same division. Hey, so well, let's jump into it. So what, what, what are your thoughts of the, of the Ravens-Browns game? I mean, it's always going to be competitive just because division rivalry. But that first half, I was a little shook. The Browns coming out hot. Then y'all had Josh Gordon back. And our corners are hurting. That first half was crazy. Second half, it seemed like the Browns fell apart and the Ravens caught fire. Right. Yeah. It took off from there. I was really impressed with the defense in, Me too. In, in the first half of the game. I was like, man, that that just that alone, I was like, that gives me that gives me some hope right there. That goal line stand was huge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was huge. Yeah. And you know, I ain't ball next time kick the field goal. <laughs> <laughs> he does fantasy yeah. points. Yeah. He took he took the the momentum right back though, because he scored right after we scored again. Like, we had that stop, then we scored that touchdown, then you guys came right back and scored. A couple things I saw that, like, gave me overall how I feel about the Browns. Like, I'm right now where I'm at, I'm like, Crow and Duke, they're really good. But we yes. do, we need another stud in that rotation. People talking about Barkley from Penn State, I, I like the kid. I do like the kid. I, I could see that. I don't know if Crow's that dude. As good as he looked, as good as he looked, it's just, I don't know. Kaiser, I think he is going to be a good quarterback in the NFL. But I think it's going to take about three years of development. Are we committed to that? When it comes to decision making, yo. I think he's mentally broken this year. I, I think I think he finally, like, he just snapped. He's me- Like, this season, he's just mentally gone. Could he, be. He's, he's probably done with the season, just hearing all, all the media and stuff. It just That's what it looked like to me in the second half. Like, he was just, he was done with it. Right. But that's part of yeah. it, though. That's yeah. part. That's part of it. You know, if you're going to be, if you got what it takes to do what you got to do in this league, you got to be able to weather that. And you definitely got, I mean, this is three games in a row. The same kind of mistakes, throwing the ball when you shouldn't, just throw the ball out of bounds, stuff like that. That end zone, we in the end zone. You can't stay back in that pocket like that. The minute he see a, a, a lane goes open, your inexperience right now, you should know. And you saw Deshaun Watson got that like in three weeks. He saw it. Okay, as soon as the lane go, go. Because if I run, it makes this defense have to think a whole different kind of way. It makes everything open up if I run. I, I think he's scared to run. Think so? You see all these young quarterbacks, they come in, they start running, they get hit, and they get hurt. And then they're never the same. Cause then, I mean, and then these coaches, they're trying to turn them running quarterbacks in the pocket passes. Yeah. And that happens too. So you sitting in practice all week and your coaches Yeah. I need you to sit them. in the pocket. I need you to do more out the pocket and then y'all got the new guy come in talking about we need a quarterback. So then that's just like mm. all right, yeah. I gotta perform. I gotta show I'm just not a runner. If it's based off that if if it's based off Kaiser being a pocket quarterback, then he ain't it. I'm sorry. I'm on Cam, I'm on Kaiser because he looked like he got a body like Cam, and and I want him to kind of play like Cam. That's why I was saying last week about Cam about Kaiser and Winston. They play similar to me because they sit back there and they try to make that big play on the pass. But sometimes they just need to run the damn ball. Well, James did a good job of that last night. Well, you know he ran the ball a lot, made things open up well, for him. Crowell too though. I mean like Crowell had that one what 60 yard run. He got the ball two times after that. Yeah. And that was in the second quarter, like halfway through the second quarter that he made that run. So what happened that he can't be on the field? That, like that's a doghouse type move thing. I think they pretty much know Crowell ain't gonna be the man. And they're just like, all right, we're gonna already look past him. Let's see what Duke Johnson got. Let's see if we can develop the chemistry with him and Kaiser. Hey, Crow, Crow would be dope if he was coming off you know, off the bench. Yeah, and like to your point, how you said that they have a good, you know, combination with uh, Javarius Allen and Alex Collins. You know, they for this game they combined for 25 carries. Crow and Duke only combined for 12. 
You know, I just I think they abandoned the abandoned the run too much. That's a good point. So this next one actually question came from Twitter from a friend named Marcus Robinson. Showing Mad Love is his Twitter handle. Show Mad right. Love. <laughs> <laughs> Show Mad Love. Uh asked who would we rather have as a head coach? Marvin Lewis, Jeff Fisher, or Hugh Jackson? First off, take Jeff Fisher out of there. I don't know why you even put him in there, man. Hugh. Out of that three? Hugh. I want Hugh out of that three. I want to hear the reasons for these two. Uh, I need Swade a little bit, guys. Cool. Well, Marvin, for me, is a sentimental pick because that's when we won our first Super Bowl. He was a defense coordinator. Had the greatest defense to probably ever touch the football field. Well, my, reason, my reason for Hugh is I think Hugh's a player's coach, and I think Hugh's figuring it out. I think Hugh's the future. Where Marvin Lewis, you know, I think he's got to learn how the future works. I think he's a good leader of men, though. I think Marvin Lewis is a good leader of men. He's and, been the coach for 15 seasons. You know, but he was the disciple of that. You know what I'm saying? He learned from from Marvin. So I think it's Hugh is the new improved Marvin. I want the new improved Marvin, so I will go with Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> the, if you go by numbers and stuff, I, I decided to look at it from, from that perspective. In three seasons, Hugh Jackson, three full seasons as a coach, He's nine and thirty-seven. Marvin Lewis is twenty-seven to twenty-one with a playoff appearance. Mm. Now, granted, in Cincinnati, Marvin Lewis gets to the playoffs and then perennially loses in the playoffs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't have a had one win in hey, the playoffs. I, hey, but I take that there. where I'm at right now as a Browns fan. I take <laughs> yeah. that in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, that'd be the Super Bowl, baby. I'm interchanged between both of them. I think with what we have set up, I kind of agree with keeping Hugh. Just because okay. to show a little bit of stability within the organization at some point, you what have about, to do that. What about bringing Lewis on staff, though? I wouldn't be against that. How or can the culture change in Cleveland? At this point, it's hard to tell if it will. We kind of hit the reset button with the whole you know new front office, new GM guy right. again after two years, so it's more of the same. I hope it does, though. The fact that Haslam said he wants to keep you next season, showing that he wants to have some kind of some kind of continuity. Will it change? I hope it does. What do you think, D? I just need some consistency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, keeping Hugh Jackson would be huge. Just because you still have that core. Like, once you lose that core, then the players got to learn a new playbook, then everything just starts falling apart. Yeah. Like, what you got comfortable with, you got to get uncomfortable. I think a second year of <coughs> Jackson and then Williams as a defensive coordinator, I really think that's going to really help set it up. Y'all got to find a quarterback that can bring that locker room together, bring them players together, and be like, look, we can win. Get some, like, if you could have brought in a Jameis Winston to get people to just follow him, like, whatever this dude does, I'm doing. He runs through this wall, I'm following right behind him. Mm -hmm. That kind of guy. Like a Carson Wentz. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like a Sean Watson. Yeah. 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 See, they might not have been, <laughs> been the answer in Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? Carson Wentz wasn't the guy in, in Cleveland and then just bottled up. Nah, that wouldn't happen. I'll say it's it's. They, I think they those. I think we talking about when you talking about Wits and Watson. You talking about some superstar caliber players. And Watson was definitely a superstar battle. Yeah. yeah, his coach told you you pass him up is like passing out Michael Jordan. Yeah, he was so right. Then that yeah. man came out there and showed him. I, I think Wentz was more was definitely more set up for AFC North though. I do too. He has the same kind of body frame. I, so I do too. Been. I do too. That's the first. That's what. That what made me sold on him from the beginning. I'm like, we gotta take him because he's an AFC North quarterback. Look at his body. Yeah. Look at his. You know what I'm saying? Played in the cold North Dakota. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. He's perfect for us. Just from the previous two drafts, taking away the obvious of Miles Garrett, Jabril Peppers, and Joku, Ogba and Coleman, who are they're safe to be back next year. You know, Ogba and Coleman's gonna be in year three. I, the one that I'm most interested about is Derek Kindred. I think he's probably got the most secure spot. Mm. He's playing on the other safety spot from Triple Peppers, and he's been in every, like he's started every game. He's top five for team total tackles. Mm. And I just, I don't know, he was what, fourth round pick? Yeah, fourth round pick in 2016. Mm. So I just, I don't know, his tenacity and the way he plays, I'm really, really thinking he's gonna be one of the most secure spots, along with Spencer Django, just cause he can play along the 
the line, like anywhere along the line. Right. So and having Joe Thomas back will help put him just back in a reserve spot. For me, it's Schubert. Yeah. Schubert is. He played his way into it for sure. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, to me, he's kind of like he kind of defines us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you know, you look at Garrett. It's just you know, you're looking at raw talent. You know, he'll look like that in any uniform. You know what I'm saying? When you see Schubert, to me, it just says Browns, man. It's just like, you know, our history and just hard nose and AFC North football. I like Schubert. Yeah, he makes a lot of plays. A lot of plays. He's contagious, too. He's contagious. A kind of kid that doesn't seem like he take no downs off. You know what I'm saying? He plays every play. And and I think that kind of play rubs off on, on people. Well, who you who you like out of our, out the out the squad in the last two picks, the last two years out of our picks? We like the same Kaiser pick. That was pretty good. You like the Kaiser? You like the Kaiser pick? Yeah, I, I mean, if y'all can keep him like playing, like let him get comfortable, think y'all got yourself a quarterback. But so, do you think <laughs> we should draft a quarterback next this, this year? We should definitely draft one because we're gonna need that kind of pressure. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, so you think competition yeah. is good? Yeah. Competition can't is always good. Can't get too comfortable. Right. Yeah. That's what happened to Joe Flacco. Got too comfortable. Mm. <laughs> Got them terrible backups. Mm. I like that. I, I agree with that. I love that theory. Keys to beating Chicago because this might be it, y'all. But yeah. even though we was here earlier, Derek brought up something very um, I didn't think about. If the Steelers in a position to sit their players, they might sit their players that last game. They're not though. Since they lost, ends up losing. The Jack Jacksonville is not going to uh, lose this weekend though. They at home, right? Mm -hmm. I think Jacksonville's at home. If they happen yeah. to drop one. The way Jacksonville's been playing, though, we don't want that lose. to happen though, because yeah. I need Blake Bortles to go off <laughs> in my championship football league. I'm in a championship league. I'm in a championship game this weekend, and I need Blake Bortles to go off. So that's I not going to happen. I hope he fails. So that if that happens, that scenario happens. That means that they won't rest the players because they'll need to win. Yeah. If Jacksonville wins. They, they, uh, I don't think they want to go to Jacksonville or Foxborough. Right. No. Considering how Jacksonville ran up in Pittsburgh and handled business. Oh, so and so they could clinch, though, if they beat Cleveland in the last game? I they, think so. they have to win out no matter what, I think. To clinch their yeah. home field advantage? Yeah. So we're seeing y'all best then. Yeah, Chicago's it, man. Um, <laughs> Chicago's our shot, uh, and it's a good shot. We got a good shot. Now, that defense yeah. of Chicago ain't no they, joke. They picked up these last, yeah, they picked yeah. up the last four or five yeah. weeks. They got time. a good defense, but we can keep it low scoring, man. We can make it a little brawl. You know, all we need is a couple a couple plays yeah. and, no, and no turnovers. That's the key to beating anybody, damn it, for us. No damn turnovers. Yeah, not the, not the same body. turnover for three. I mean, it's the <laughs> same turnover, dude. Interception, fumble, bad decision, bad decision, bad decision. Uh, yeah, play to our strengths. I think, like I said, I think running the ball is more like more to our strengths. So I just keep to it. Hugh Jackson said, you know, he's sorry that he didn't get the fans a win at home, and he's trying to apologize for it. I don't accept that apology because he's part of the reason why we have these losses because he wants to throw unnecessary plays, like pass plays. Yeah. So, play to the strengths, run the offense through the running game, and defense, get after Trubisky and force turnovers. Force them to pass, which I think we can do that too. I think we'll be able to make them one-dimensional. What do you think we need to do to beat Chicago? I don't know. I thought y'all were going to beat Green Bay. Yeah. yeah. Finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a big thing with us. We stop playing around it in the third quarter. I think that's because y'all just used to. How's the thing in the third quarter? We're gonna lose. Let's just run the ball and get out of yeah. here. It's when, a mind. It's a mindset with them. I think. Like they just knew something bad was gonna happen. As soon as Kaiser turns it over, I think that's what happens to them. Like I told people, y'all coming up on that season where y'all just destroy everybody and you get into the playoffs. Right before you let all your draft picks walk out the door. I think we're going to be like Jacksonville. I think that's what it's going to look like. The defense is going to get crazy. And we're going to find some kind of consistency. If you're going to play in Just the North, ugly. you got to have a defense. Got to. Yeah. If you're going to play in the North, you gonna have. You got to have a defense. FanDuel. Huh. Browns are our blood. FanDuel League. Nope. You, guys can, you guys can join and play against us. 
Yeah, if if you sign up, nobody yeah. signed up this week. Yeah, we took. I, uh, I had a busy week. I just kind of forgot. I'm not gonna lie. I had, I had too much going on. <laughs> I was like, let me let me take a let me take a step back from Fanduel. It was being mischievous. There's two people in the, in the league. There's two people. But you know what? I didn't care. I dominated. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't be scared of me, y'all. Come on back. Jonathan, Anthony, M. Zap, Gary. Gary. Oh, especially <laughs> Gary. <laughs> oh, my God. Blowing in my ear. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> make sure you check out Fancy Football Bosses. That's their pa- podcast. That's every Thursday. Um, get that on iTunes, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Stitcher, anywhere. They're, anywhere they're streaming audio. And you can find us on YouTube as well. Yep. At Muscle Monk Sound Vision. You can subscribe, like, comment, let us know how we're doing. No doubt. Love talking. By the way, Elliot Kendall, Jeff Mitzel. I think that's how you say his name. Mitzel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Love having the com- combo back and forth with you guys on that. Yeah. Um, from Browns Bloggers and Friends. Great, yeah. If you're in the Cleveland Browns football and you're on Facebook, make sure you go to Browns Bloggers and Friends. Yeah. We all in there hanging out, talking football, talking Cleveland Browns football. So much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for working with us, D. Yes, we appreciate man. it, man. Had a good yes. time. I'll, I'll be here next year. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be here after the Ravens win the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they, got, they got a little work to do hey, for that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even <laughs> be mad at it. All you got to do is get Joe Flacco in the playoffs. That's a different guy. You know, we didn't even get into, you know, how, you know, basically that's our team won that Super Bowl. That ain't their team. That ain't their team. That was our pick. Ray when Lewis was, that was our pick. He wasn't that pick. <laughs> they didn't show up to the game. You don't show up. <laughs> team moves. Ask the Colts. They snuck out in the middle of the night and they made flowers. Oh, oh man. But y'all got to come see us this weekend. We're going to punish y'all. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you got Indy. Y'all got Indy. Y'all got, oh. y'all got win out. Yep. 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 Just so we can get fifth place and then go to Pittsburgh and knock off the Steelers. I wouldn't be mad at that. Oh, I don't know. I might be mad at that. It's just a... Uh, I hate both of y'all so much. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think me it's too. hate. I think it's more jealousy and envy that when the Ravens were. That breeds hate. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, that's yes. You're, you're definitely correct. <laughs> you're definitely <laughs> correct. Jealous, all yeah. that. All of the above. Yes. That. That breed, it breeds the hate. Hate, 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 hate <laughs> for the Ravens. Hate, 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 hate for the Steelers. I forgot to mention, too. <laughs> I told you this on Sunday. What? But what my mom said. How, like, the Browns just seem like they don't want to finish the game. Like, they just don't have that want to win, that will to win. Right. My mom watches, like, three games a year, guys. And, like, if she notices that and just watching two or three games a year, and she only watches it to get on to my dad. (laughs) So, I mean, if she's noticing it, imagine us talking about it in more, like, just different ways. We're tiptoeing around it. Yeah. Hey, man, we're good, man. <laughs> we're good. Our defense is young, and then we got a foundation there with defense. We got a little foundation with offense, small, but it's there. And we got a bunch of picks. And we got someone who can evaluate yes. talent. Man, we're going in the right direction. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. And Josh Gordon is back. And Josh Gordon back. And we need to keep him. <laughs> we need to keep him. He needs to go to Baltimore. Yeah. No. Okay, cool. enough with all that. Yeah. Enough yeah. with all that. Uh, uh. Josh Gordon, if you're watching this, stay in a, Cleveland. He got a real quarterback in Baltimore. You seen Flacco. You know you don't want to play for Flacco. <laughs> That's the last place you want to be, bro. <laughs> Man, stay with these youngins. We're gonna get you a, we're gonna get you a real gunslinger. We're gonna get you a real gunslinger flash. And I'm telling you, and in two, three years, Kaiser gonna be there too. Once again, thank you for watching Browns in Our Blood. My name is Eric Jordan. I'm not Eric Jordan. That's Anthony Sellers. And this is Browns, Browns in, in Our Blood. Blood. Here we go, Brownies. Beat the Bears. This is time for it. We got it. 2 and 14. Here it comes. 2 and 14. <laughs>